Hi guys, Joe here from Rumble Pack, and today I'm going to show you a design that I myself made in Minecraft. It's a farm design for a 100% automatic melon farm. And so, as you can see here, it's a farm design that uses redstone circuitry and also a daylight sensor so that once a Minecraft day, or every 20 minutes, the farm actually cycles on and off and therefore breaks melon blocks, moves the melon slices around into a hopper system, and then deposits them into a chest. And so the use of this in Minecraft is a great hands-free food source that needs no upkeep once it's made. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys in a little more detail. Alright, so I'm going to do a quick demo here for you guys, and I'm also going to explain how the non-redstone parts of the melon farm operate. So as I said earlier, the melon farm uh, operates on a day-night cycle, so at game time 4300, which is just before noon in Minecraft, the farm turns on to its active state. So the melon blocks are broken by dirt being pushed up by a bottom set of sticky pistons, and the top set of, top set of sticky pistons actually uh, raise these blocks right here along the water current to fall down. Um, the melon blocks are broken into melon slices, which are pushed up right up here against this wall by the current. And so uh, there is a 20-minute day-night cycle. For four minutes of that approximately, this farm is in its active state, which you see here. At game time, 7,720, the farm turns off. So the water is retracted from this top current, and these uh, dirt blocks are actually retracted also downward and are flush with the stairs. Now the original current is going to push these melon slices into the hoppers. And so the hopper system, as you can see right over here, just a really simple one, runs into a chest. So we're going to check right here in just a moment. As you can see, there are definitely melon slices flowing in there, so that's awesome. Um, so typically, on a farm like this, with the 16 minutes off, with like the cycle, how 16 minutes of the time the farm is not active, it gives um, about it, there's 80 to 90 percent of these spaces right here are full of melon, which usually lends to about over a, in between a stack and a stack and a half of melon for each cycle, and so. Um, being, you know, three day-night cycles uh, in an hour, the approximate output of the farm is usually around 225 melon per hour, and sometimes a little more. So uh, now that I showed you this part, I'm actually going to switch to the backside, and we're going to show you the redstone part of this farm. All right, so this is the backside of the melon farm here. And as you can see, the circuitry actually isn't too complicated. There are four sections of it, and so let's get started. First, we have the magenta portion over here, which actually deals with the input of the circuit itself. So using a daylight sensor, we can get an input for our farm. Now at game time 4300, the output strength of this daylight sensor reaches 15, which means that redstone, even redstone that's 15 blocks away, is powered. So that means that this piece of redstone dust right here becomes powered, thus depowering this redstone torch right here. So the magenta portion uh, gets the input for the melon farm from the output of a daylight sensor. The next portion is the blue portion of the circuit. When this redstone torch is turned off at game time 4300, it depowers the dust, the repeaters, and the pistons right here. And these pistons are the top set of pistons, which uh, lets the water pour over the farm and transfers the melon slices uh, to the hoppers. The next portion of the farm is this orange part right here. The orange part, when this torch is turned off, just carries that signal, or lack of signal, down to this green portion right here. So the green portion of the farm deals with the bottom set of pistons and that output. At game time 4300, when the farm is turned on, this section right here is depowered. So the dust, the repeaters, and these blocks are all depowered. When these blocks right here are depowered, the redstone torches right here actually power the bottom set of pistons, which is another output. Those pistons are the pistons that move the dirt blocks up and actually break the melon blocks themselves. So those are the input and the outputs for this circuit. As you can see, it's pretty easy. There are four sections, and they're all color-coded here. So yeah, it's not too complicated. Um, really, for the most part, the circuit uses repeaters and pistons and redstone torches. Uh, nothing too fancy and also really simple to build. So I want to talk a little bit about the various advantages and disadvantages of this design. One disadvantage is that, as you might have seen, a very few melon slices don't always make it into the hoppers of the farm and instead are stuck by the melon roots. 
Another disadvantage is that if the weather isn't clear, the farm might not activate during that day-night cycle. And that's because if the weather isn't clear, the uh, output signal strength from the daylight sensor doesn't reach 15. However, that can actually be circumnavigated by building this design in a desert or savanna biome where it doesn't rain. So, there are two main advantages to this design for a melon farm. First is that the build itself and the redstone circuitry are both really simple and not complicated. They're pretty easy to build. The second and best advantage of this design is that it's server and multiplayer friendly. Because there isn't a lot of lag caused by complicated redstone mechanisms, it doesn't glitch or break in multiplayer settings. Alright, well that is it for this showcase here. If you really enjoyed me discussing this design and talking a little bit about it, then hopefully you know it would be awesome if you could leave a like or a favorite. Also too, if you have any questions about the design or even Minecraft in general, definitely feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try my very best to answer them for you, and personally, I would love that if you guys asked some questions. Also too, if you want to subscribe to Rumble Pack, we have lots of awesome video ideas and videos coming out soon, so definitely, definitely do that. We love to have people watch our videos. So this has been Joe from Rumble Pack, and I hope you guys have a very fantastic day. See ya!